Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Sid Meier's Gettysburg, the 1997 classic, and still one of the best war games of all time, in my opinion. Uh, today we're going to be starting a brand new series that is looking at this game, playing through the campaign from the Confederate perspective. So, we have just completed a campaign playing through for the Union, in today's video, we're going to start the Confederate campaign. We lost the battle, although not decisively as the Union. We'll hope we can do a little bit better for the Confederacy and maybe outperform what they did in real life. And just maybe, just maybe, uh, win a tactical victory for the Confederacy or a decisive victory or at least a marginal victory for the Confederacy. Now, as you may remember, this game uh, fights the Battle of Gettysburg in a series of scenarios that are linked that have sort of carryover results uh, and... Also, these sort of, uh, what do you call them, like full motion videos or these different activities that occur between videos. So uh, that's one of my favorite things at the game, and we'll see one of those in just a moment. Uh, but in addition to that, we're going to be playing the game on the second highest difficulty level on the uh, General, what is it, Doubleday level. Uh, General Abner Doubleday, the sort of hypocritical creator of the game of baseball, but not really, also political enemy of General Meade after the war when uh, Meade had fired him during Gettysburg. Uh, Doubleday, by the way, takes command from Reynolds when Reynolds passes away uh, on the first day's fight and, and commands the first corps from there on. But but I'm kind of rambling at this point. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from a couple of days ago, so uh, just be aware of that. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to my live stream yourself and sit back, relax, and I hope you guys enjoy the show. General Heath, sir, how's your command? Sir, my men are in fine fighting spirits today. They lack only for shoes, sir. The march from Virginia has left many with leather worn through to the skin. One of your foragers sent to requisition footwear from the shoe factory at Gettysburg this morning. They report that a federal cavalry force now holds the town, and some say they heard the drums of uh, infantry marching in column from the east. Infantry. General Heath, the only force at Gettysburg is cavalry. Probably just a detachment of observation. I am just from General Lee, and the information he has from his scouts corroborates that the enemy are still at Middleburg and have not yet struck their tents. Well then, sir, if there is no objection, I will take my division tomorrow and go to Gettysburg and get those shoes. None in the world. None in the world. Sir, this no-good Yankee cavalry's been slowing our advance all morning. I want to shake out a couple of brigades and move it along a little. Any infantry out there? No, sir. Nothing but cavalry. Not a sight of infantry. Well, then, deploy your men and move on into town and get those shoes. Good. I'll bring up some artillery to support. You must hold this position at the end of the battle. This is your best brigade. There'll be some more infantry coming up. This is your best brigade. All right, we're going to move the Napoleons up right away as soon as this battle starts here. Up to these, uh, this little orchard, so they're a little bit closer to the enemy front lines. We're going to go ahead and maneuver our infantry forward as well. We're going to move Davis up here to the north. Also, what's the speed that we're... Keep playing on normal speed here. Alright, we're gonna wait for... Di well, once uh, Archer's in position, start advancing. There he is. Everybody's in line. Advance. Assuming Cutler will be coming up here very shortly. There's some cavalry coming up. I haven't seen the infantry yet. There's also an oblique command in this game, which changes this to a funny color, but I don't know what the actual... Um, I don't know what the value of the oblique command is.
I mainly just turned the rally command on for Archer so that he would uh, get up to the line quicker. You can see we've got three brigades here firing on these first couple of Federal Cavalry Brigades. Go ahead and halt another or regiments, sorry. The one thing with this game is like, unless you zoom in super close, and even when you do, sometimes it's hard to get your cursor on the actual unit you want it on. So, I have these guys marching, even though I don't really want them to be marching. Alright, now I don't know if these guys are in skirmish line. They seem to be. They seem to be in skirmish line to me. Let's actually deploy these guys in skirmish line as well. They definitely look like they're skirmishers. We can push them back by charging. Skirmish lines, I was looking at the rules, and apparently... Oh, there's Cutler's... Or there's, uh... Yeah, Cutler's Brigade. Skirmish lines apparently in this game uh, actually do more damage um, than standard line infantry, or very similar damage than standard line infantry. And uh, I don't quite always understand why, but apparently that's a thing. So skirmishers can be very useful for inflicting heavier damage... Uh, with less loss, because you take a lot fewer casualties when you're in skirmish positions. General Heath, you get up there to support your men. These guys are all fighting some federal infantry in the woods there, but they're doing okay. Uh, they're not, their morale isn't anything we need to be worried about yet. 42nd mass. See, these Confederate, or these Yankee, I think these guys are in skirmish formation. Pretty sure. Now, the second Mississippi is going to be exposing its flank to this enemy artillery, so that could be kind of devastating. But if we're really going to be able to charge this uh, enemy cavalry unit here, the point blank range. One thing I don't understand is why when you do that, like, I feel like the Yankee Cavalry never routes. They just seem to have a really uh, route-resistant ability in a way that doesn't reflect my ability to route enemy troops in battle. So... Another enemy brigade coming up. I think it's Meredith's Iron Brigade. Presumably they're going to push us back. We're approaching the hill, though. There's one little trick which I won't, I will, I will not use regularly. But see if you notice what I'm about to do. I don't know if you noticed, but all of the stress for all of my units just went away. Yep. Sneaky little me. I discovered cheats online. Not that I'm going to use them regularly, but I thought it would be fun to just kind of see how that affects the battle in the game. Obviously, if you can eliminate stress for your troops, then they become, you know, they can just stand in line essentially until either the enemy breaks or you, uh, or they're all dead. Got a whole brigade massed up against the one regiment over here. One thing that I think uh, Scourge of War does very nicely that uh, this game does not, and obviously Scourge of War, a much newer game, certainly uh, to a certain extent also inspired by this game, uh, is that Scourge of War enables units to fire at multiple units. So a really big regiment, for example, might actually be you know shooting at multiple enemy regiments. This game really doesn't allow for that. And uh, that's... Kind of a shame, if you will, but it just doesn't. The, the way the game is made, you can only have one regiment shooting at one other enemy regiment. So, you know, that, that can kind of be a bit of a, a hindrance when you're trying to fight off, uh, you know, this mass of units. You've got set almost 600 troops here in this one regiment. None of these enemy regiments have 600 men. They're all at least half our strength, and yet we can only shoot one-to-one -one against them. I also think we're firing perhaps at... I hope these guys aren't in skirmish column. They look like they're in line. 
but there's the other risk is that you have to figure out like who are you actually shooting at and are they being effectively utilized So we've got Pettigrew's infantry coming up. A little ways away, though. We're going to have to wait. One of those regiments I just ordered to hold was routed. So there goes our center. And they just grew routed, too, because they're basically all dead. Uh, Razor Jaw, new Civil War game for who? Uh, I guess I'm wondering, who are you referring to? Like, who's developing uh, this Civil War game that you want to know if I know anything about? Regiments just rallied. Things are not looking so great. Uh, well, there is a new game being developed um, called Graviteam, or not Graviteam, good lord. Graviteam already makes their own games. Um, there's a new Civil War game being developed uh, by. Grand Tactician. Uh, they're developing a, a Civil War game that is kind of like a mix between like an Ultimate General and an Ajod game, supposedly. That's the that's the rumor anyway. I don't I don't know anything. I don't know a ton about it. I did do an interview for the Single Malt Strategy podcast, uh, which is my podcast, um, and we you know we talked about that. It was an interview with the developer. Uh, so you know it's it's an exciting sounding game. I will certainly say that um it's still super early in development seem development like it seems so um i don't know much about it uh in terms of what the final product will actually be um the interview had quite a bit of information we just don't know how it's all going to play out and um you know i guess we'll we'll find out here as Pettigrew's brigade comes charging in uh, to hopefully restore a little bit of our line here. We've got the 2nd Mississippi and the 55th North Carolina on our one flank, closest to McPherson's Hill, uh, in the best shape to continue the... Or essentially, the anchoring our left. Uh, meanwhile, Brockenborough is charging for it. And by the way, one of the reasons... <laughs> you know, look at this. Look at how... Oh my god. I can't type. That's the advantage to the cheat that I just had, by the way, was that you can get rid of your stress, which basically allows you to double-click everywhere you want for free. I won't be cheating all night, guys. Um, but essentially, uh, there's a, a whole slew of cheats you can actually find. There's an interesting website called The Angle, uh, which, what is, is it The Angle? Which was this old-timey, um, yeah, The Angle, which was this old-timey uh, website back in the late 90s, early 2000s, which, which looked at this game and uh, covered it in, in great detail quite a bit, actually, as well as the, uh, the follow-on games for it. All right, so let's get our lines moving forward here. Whole new brigade just went into action. Gonna move Archer off to the flank over here. Meanwhile, we've got uh, Davis. Go ahead and reform your brigade here, or what's left of it. Heath, you'll provide support. We've got one regiment out here, kind of chilling. We're also gonna bring up some artillery here to bring them in close to these front lines. Oh shit! The Brockenborough's brigade just retreated. 
one of the other challenges with this game is your your AI, while very smart in terms of playing against the uh, AI and you know your ability to effectively win battles. Uh, one area the AI is is pretty weak in is its ability to realize like, oh, I'm just marching blindly into enemy fire. I should probably stop and return fire. The game does a really good job of you know letting you march your troops to their deaths, but that's generally not what you want to do. Archer, how are your men doing? They're pretty de-stressed, so you're going to advance here on this Union flank. We don't have a ton of time left, so I, I don't know if we're going to win this battle or not, but at least I've got, of any of the scenarios I've fought so far, whether it was streaming last night or streaming the other night as the Union, I feel like at the moment my line is more cohesive than it has been at any any point in time uh, in these in these battles here. So we've got multiple units all firing here at this lone Federal Regiment on the right flank. On the left, we've got two firing at the uh, 8th New York Cavalry. Alright, I think there's still some Yankees that are in skirmish formation that we're engaging with. It's really frustrating. All right, this cavalry also, or this artillery here, these are smoothbores, so the closer you can move the smoothbores to the front line, the more effective, typically, they will be. All right, these guys are going to route for sure. Hey, they just caused the Yankees to run, though. We approach before the uh, before the time runs out. Damn. We've got the bulk of our troops engaged over here, on a flank where there are no objectives. Holy crap! The 52nd North Carolina. Are they receiving fire from? Like these are maybe these guys aren't receiving fire. I swear these these cavalry have to be in. God. Some of these freaking guys are in skirmish formation. These infantry here are definitely in skirmish formation. Those bastards. No, we just lost. Damn it. A tactical Union victory. We lost 2,300 men. The Federals lost only about 900 infantry. They did lose about 300 cavalry, so that's going to be about one-fifth of their force. Um, I it, Two points used a cheat uh, that didn't really impact. It wasn't really a critical moment when I used it. Um, but, uh, anyway, so they held McPherson's Hill, they lost, uh, 2,300 points worth of, or sorry, 1,600 points worth of soldiers, 986 infantry, 331 cavalry, which is worth 662 points. We lost 2,300 men, so we lost about a little bit more than a third of our force. Uh, they lost a, about a third of their force as well, at least in terms of infantry. Um, nonetheless, it's a tactical victory, so they win by about a thousand points, they hold McPherson's Hill, which then will drive the historical second scenario. You can see here the best uh, units were the Cutler's Brigade, so that's the Eastern Iron Brigade, made up of New York regiments, the 76th New York under Cutler, and then the hardest fighting units, the 24th Michigan under Solomon Meredith, and that's the Western Iron Brigade. I find it interesting that Cutler was slated to be the brigade commander of the Iron Brigade. He commanded one of the Iron Brigade's regiments, and he was next in line in seniority when Gibbon moved on to divisional command. But because of politics and because of General Joseph Hooker, uh, Cutler was bypassed. And Solomon Meredith, uh, who was an influential uh, member who had a, a relationship with 
was that the governor of Indiana or Ohio, one or the other, uh, who was one of the most important union governors during the war, and, uh, you know, essentially was able to get Meredith promoted to command of one of the best brigades in the army, and then when Cutler was bypassed, he went to fight with the Eastern Iron Brigade, uh, another one of the best brigades in the Union Army. Although in Meredith's defense, he did turn out to be a, a more than qualified com- com- <clears throat> commander, so... All right, guys, that's going to do it here for part one of our look at Sid Meier's Gettysburg playing as the Confederates through the Grand Campaign. Uh, Our battle didn't get off to a great start. We were defeated by the Union. It was a tactical defeat, although, frankly, to me, the battle felt a little bit closer. I didn't make as strong of a a push as I probably should have. Uh, Maybe I felt a little guilty little guilty using a cheat code to eliminate stress. The interesting thing I find with that cheat code is I don't use it very often. I used it, what, like once or twice just sort of to kind of see how it would work. Uh, the interesting thing I find with those codes in these kind of games, though, or at least in this game specifically, is it feels like after you use them, your troops always retreat if they're in combat. So I, that's a weird little quirk. Um, with that being said, I think, uh, pardon the yawn, it's like one in the morning here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sign off here today and we will fight the second battle, the historic attack on Oak Hill, in our next video. So we lost the first battle, but we're supposed to lose the first battle to model history. So, so far, history is in, on, on track, in, in, uh, you know, on course, and uh, we'll take a look and see what happens in our next battle. Until then, though, this is the historical gamer saying, As always, thank you for tuning in and continuing to support the channel. And uh, until next time, uh, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.